Welcome back. Uh, we have Tunde Kolawale, a uh, regular guest analyst and author press, standing by uh, to do justice to the headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies. Uh, Mr. Kolawale, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. Uh, we'll start things off this morning by looking at stories coming on the front page of the leadership uh, newspaper. It's quite a colorful one, colorful one this morning. Uh, with some infographics uh, on the ongoing ASU strike, uh, it makes for a good read. Um, but the big story on the front page of the leadership uh, is about the ongoing nationwide protests by Labour. And it says that nationwide protests, Labour gives FG two weeks to meet ASU's demands. Labour gives FG two weeks to meet ASU's demand. It says failure will attract serious actions from workers, holds mega rally in Abuja today. Northern youth declare support for the NLC. Governors urge prompt resolution of crisis, decry, decry uh, plight of students. Of course, um, uh, at the different state uh, chapters of the NLC, the governors uh, uh, were presented with the uh, demands of uh, the NLC that, uh, you know, talk about the ASU, ongoing ASU strike. More from the leadership this morning at the top of that front page. My ability is not centered around spikes, uh, Musa replies Michael Johnson. And so some controversy regarding her breaking of that world record and the statements are coming from former American athlete, athlete rather, Michael Johnson. Terrorist ambush, military confirms three casualties. There were some reports that said um, eight soldiers died, one lieutenant, one captain, and six uh, officers. But uh, what we hear uh, from the military, they're saying three persons died. Also, yesterday, the Kogi state governor uh, confirmed some deaths after he mourned uh, in a statement some of the soldiers who came from his state. Restructure debt to avoid default. IMF warns Nigeria others. Restructure debt, debt to avoid default. IMF warns Nigeria others. PMB 6, confirmation of acting CJN for CBN directors, 19 INEC nominees. I think we should say 19 INEC commissioner uh, resident electoral commissioners nominee. Uh, we have uh, commissioner nominees. We have 66 persons kidnapped in Kaduna, Zamfara. DSS issued 44 reports on Kuje prison attack, Uwase. This is uh, quite interesting. 44 good reports on Kuje prison attack. Uh, yet nothing was done uh, to stop it. That was enough to stop it. No plan to impeach Baja Biamila over controversial water resources bill. Reps is one to watch. Uh, this is some of the stories coming on the front page of the leadership this morning. Let's go next to the Daily Trust newspaper. It has also its own set of infographics. Uh, this time a weekly update on the continuous voter registration exercise by the Independent National Electoral Commission. It's quite interesting to see uh, the figure there is 11 million 11,119. But to the stories, the big one on the front page, 2023, North lags behind as voter registration ends in four days. North lags behind as voter registration ends in four days. The writers to that story, Delta Rivers register more people than Sakoto, Niger, Katsina. Lagos, Kano, Delta, top chart. Imo, Yobe, Ekiti, lowest. Insecurity, disenchantment, responsible. Don Activists, these are those who are saying that, making that statement. More from the Daily Trust, uh, ASU FG. ASU FG knocked as NLC stated stages solidarity protests in states. No immediate resolution to aviation crisis. This has come from the minister and the airlines. Bandit skill six in Taraba, Katsina, abduct 36 in Kaduna. DSS presented 44 security reports before the Kuje prison attack. Deputy Speaker. Buhari seeks confirmation of Ariwola CJN and 19 others as INEC Rex, Yaga Partners, uh, Yaga Africa Partners Media Trust on election debate. And it says terrorists plotting to attack Lagos FCT others, NSCDC, schools, worship centers, national assets targeted. Or of course, the NSCDC uh, were named as the ones who came out with that uh, security alert that led to the deployment of the guards of brigade, or brigade of guards officials uh, to the entry and exit points in Abuja, uh, of course, resulted in that uh, uh, shootout between the 
guards and the terrorists. Let's go to the next uh, protocol. This time it's the nation. The nation also has its uh, set of stories, a picture there um, depicting or showing what happened yesterday, the first day of the nationwide protests by the Nigerian Labour Congress in solidarity with ASU. And the big story, they're looking at uh, the attack on the Brigade of Guards. The headline there, two officers, six soldiers killed in attack on presidential guards. This is a, a departure from what the leadership newspaper quoted the military as saying. So they're saying two officers, six soldiers killed in attack on presidential guards. That means eight, as opposed to what the military said was three. More from the nation. Uh, Buhari seeks confirmation of acting CJN-19 Rex. Train attack victim, 100 million naira paid for my freedom. 100 million naira uh, paid for my freedom. I think we need to do a calculation of how much has been paid so far by the victims or families of the victims of uh, the train abductions. Excess crude account down from $35 million to 376655 dollars I had to pause there because I wasn't sure if I was seeing it well. Excess crude account down from $35 million to 376655 dollars Insecurity, food prices could double, farmers won. Varsity strike, act fast to avert unrest, Labour tells federal government. Some stories on the front page of uh, uh, the nation. Another interesting one at the bottom of that front page. Reps move to bar CBN governor, deputy from politics, and APC leaders mourn Nelson. All right, those are the headlines on the front page of the nation news. So let's uh, move over quickly to the last paper for this morning. This happens to be the punch. And the punch, of course, also, like the nation, gives uh, the uh, graphic space on its front page to the ongoing Nigeria Labor Congress national protest, a nationwide protest. And of course, um, the big story on the front page, this time they go with terrorism. Iswa plots massive attacks in Lagos, Kaduna, others. Security alert in the FCT call to bar venue changed amid fear of attack. This is uh, the call to bar. This is what happens for those who are newly, uh, the new lawyers. Katsina communities invaded. Troops patrol Abuja's police allay fears. Uh, accounts for $1 billion security fund. Governor Otom knocks federal government over attacks. ASU, labor threatens to shut down economy, plans strike. And at the top of that front page, FX crisis, made in Nigeria products for 27% to 7.4 trillion naira. Details on the page 18 of the Punch newspaper. No immediate solution to aviation sector crisis, FG. A Mayfield House to bar CBN chiefs from politics. Subsidy, lawmakers to probe Jonathan's administration. Reps deny planning Baja Biamila's sack over water resources bill. Nigeria graduates working as Canadian guards killed, identified. Very sad one there. Passengers tackle bribe-seeking ocean policeman, law graduate battered. And Muslim Muslim ticket, Tinubu begins consultation, can denies knowledge. Uh, what would have thought would have been done with the talk of that, but this week uh, the pages of these papers cannot escape some coverage of the Muslim Muslim ticket. And finally, from the punch, FARC allocation rises 18%. FG states share 802 billion naira. Those are the headlines on the front page of the nation of the punch newspaper. Let's bring in Tunde Kolawale at this point. And uh, 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 Barista Kolawale, it's uh, uh, very interesting to see the disparity in the figures coming, uh, the casualty figures after the attack or the uh, shootout between terrorists and uh, operatives of the Brigade of Guards in Abuja and Bwari. Area Council. The nation is surprised, as indeed other papers have, have stated, uh, saying eight officers or two officers, six soldiers, meaning, meaning, meaning eight uh, members of the Guard of Brigade, uh, a captain, a lieutenant, and six soldiers. Whilst the um, leadership newspaper is quoting the military as saying, for now, we have three casualties. What do you make of this? Well, my brother, 
whether it is the eight consultancies or three consultancies that the soldiers or the Nigerian army have recorded, it doesn't really make a difference. Human life is human life. A single life, when lost, can be equated to a thousand lives that have been lost. So, I want to say, these young people who have lost their lives, have, some of them have parents, they have wives, they have children, and then also relations and friends, who will never get to see them again or benefit from whatever assistance they can render to them. Secondly, the attack on the brigade of God is an affront on the Nigerian nation. The brigade of God is an allied corps that not only protects uh, the presidency, but that are also, when the kids are really down, when there are serious problems, when the nation's capital, the presidency, or the seat of government is under siege, that is when the decade of God are brought out to confront whoever is mounting the attack from the seat of government or the symbol of the Nigerian nation. So here we see a situation in which on a routine basis, on a casual basis, without any remorse, plenty of audacity and impunity, the bandits will go and attack the brigade of God or ambush the brigade of God, just like they have um, attacked the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna. And then the Nigerian Air Force says that in the past they shot down. What this tells us is that this is not just mere banditry. This would appear to me that it is on the edges that are in action and that has been prevented everywhere in Nigeria such that they are now the one choosing the battle field, choosing the battle line and dictating the weapon that is going to be used in their confrontation with the Nigerian nation. So, the National Security Advisor, the police, the CSF, the National, I mean, um, the People Defense Corps, Immigration, and no manner of security matter that we have in this country required to wake up to confront these subversive elements who are helping on the soil or bringing the Nigerian nation to its knees. And it is doable. If only we will encourage these uh, young people, if only Nigerian people will stop cooperating with the Jihad. If only we won't give information to the security people to do their job when necessary. And then I also want to say kudos to the DSS and also to the Civil Defense uh, uh, Corps. Because these people can only be seen and not hard. Most times, some of us criticize them in very, very harsh manner that they've not been aligned to their responsibility. But here you have rats from the deputy speaker of the House of Red, telling us that more than 44 reports were written to the people in power, to the prison people, and to all manners of the Department of government, that one imminent, I mean one attack or the other are imminent. But in a cavalier or in a very casual manner, those which will ensure and those which will force the attack went to sleep, and the consequences is what you have seen that has happened to the brigade of God. All right, thank you very much, Chundekola. Well, it's, uh, it's yeah. also worthy to note that um, the reports say that uh, at about 13 of the soldiers are, uh, uh, or let's just say some, because we have for conflicting figures right now. Some of the soldiers yeah. are, are missing in action, uh, and exactly. uh, the, the military has launched a, a, a hunt for, for them or to try and rescue a rescue operation. Uh, for them. I uh, would like to, I mean, you've talked about the Na National Security and Civil Defense Corps and the security alert they issued for uh, the, the FCT. Um, they've talked about the fact that we have schools and worship centers and national assets uh, being targeted uh, in the federal 
uh, capital territory. This is here yeah, talking about the NSCDC. Um, also linked to this is the Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps saying that uh, the Department of State Services presented 44 security reports before the Kujay prison attack. I mean, I think we can talk about this with the benefit of yeah. hind hindsight. Yeah. And this is uh, as uh, indicated in the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Yeah, what really happened is that uh, most times some of these departments of state will do their job diligently, but those who should take action with respect to whatever information these people may have given them, will they just they will not do it. They believe that those administrations are just crying where there is none. In my own opinion, and judging from what happened from other parts of the world, when they are going to material security breaches, the American CIA, the FBI, and their police will quickly raise an alarm. And you find out the political authorities and the security agencies who are responsible for the protection of the area that alarm has been raised in the attack will swing into action. But well, here in Nigeria, it is business as usual. We are never bothered. It's uh, a reflection on our attitude to some of these very serious fundamental issues. I have been telling people that the reason why Nigeria has also not been able to provide access with electricity is because of our cavalier manner, our approach to some of these issues. When somebody is put in charge of the plan and you leave the plan on the weekend to attend a naval ceremony, a burial ceremony, a marriage ceremony, then if the plan has a problem, when it's not there, the electricity supply is shut down. This is for some of the security forces. You see some, some small time when the police people are on the patrol, rather than being alarmed and attentive. So whoever may be wanting to attack them, you see some of them chewing granules, you see some of them touching, instead of being at a lot. So, with me, I think, if what the deputy speaker of the House of Red is, uh, is true, there is a need for a massive shake-up in most of these security agencies. Those security, I mean, the whole Nigerian environment, has been infiltrated by the jihadists. And they say we are back on a massive porch. We might not be able to get on top of this game. It is not impossible that people within the brigade of God, they have been infiltrated. They have been them from the who are giving reports to the jihadists as regards to the movement of the brigade of God and some of these other security people that we have over there. So, we require to have layers upon layers of security. The churches should provide their own security. The local government should provide security. The communities, the different communities in Nigeria, should organize their own security. So, complement the regular security that we have in the police, we have in the army, the navy, the air force, and all these other security agencies. But more importantly, Giving information to the security people is paramount. Without information, there is little and nothing the security people can do to secure us. They are not um, soothsayers. They are not babalangos or marabouts who will put some uh, sand on the ground and begin to reach where security breaches will uh, occur in a country as large as Nigeria with a population of about 200 million people. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we, we, we look at uh, more of these stories. Um, the one that made me pause uh, to actually be sure I was looking at the right figure on the front page of the Nation newspaper, uh, uh, Barry Sakola uh, happens yeah. to be the, uh, the, the shocking depletion of the excess crude account. You know, $35 million down to $376,655. dollars Not even up to $500,000. Uh, dollars. Um, um, maybe those who will be shocked at this, like I am, are overreacting. 
What do you say to this? Oh, it isn't surprising to me. If you may remember, there was a time somebody uh, attacked the, the CBN governor. I think the person broke maybe into a telephone conversation or whatever. I don't know how he got the information. And when the CBN governor was said, I was alert to be raising an alarm that the foreign exchange security, that the, the foreign exchange um, holding of the CBN has been badly depleted and that uh, he doesn't know how he's going to be able to manage uh, the foreign exchange and also the Nigerian economy. And of course, too, the acting like as a general of the Federation uh, not too long ago alerted Nigerians that they were borrowing money to pay federal civil servants uh, salary. In the past, too, I think it was uh, when governor, the governor of Ejo State who raised an alarm that uh, the Nigerians are falling in the holding has been badly distributed and that the country has come back to and that we are merely printing Naira notes to spend. So, when you look at all these things, and then the remittances that are coming from abroad, which is always gently due to COVID-19, which shut down the economy in most parts of the world, due to the war that is going on in Ukraine, and then the performance of the Naira, these of these the four other currencies around the world, like the dollar, like the euro, like uh, the pound sterling, all these are indicators that our foreign exchange has been badly depleted. Because it is when you match your foreign exchange holdings with your Naira in circulation that will determine the rate at which your own currency or your Naira will change for some of these um, uh, currencies. The, the, what we have in our hands is a consequence of the propagacy. Because if we have not been propagated, if we have improved in the management of our resources, we ought not to have degenerated to this level. Remember, when Obasanjo was there, when Okonjo Iwala was there, they went around the whole world to solicit for their forgiveness. They also paid those creditors who refused to forgive the debt. And the general debt falling their debt was a white dog. We started on a clean slate. We immediately got a good lunch on the time I came in. And then uh, with the Bali administration, we went back to the status quo. We started borrowing from left, right, and center. And some people started drumming it into our ear that borrowing is a virtue. And I've been asking, if borrowing is a virtue, why did the IMF, the World Bank, impose very stringent measures on countries that are able to meet their financial obligations? On countries that go are borrowing, why is it that the value of the currency of a nation that borrows goes down? So, it is the political class that we should blame for some of these things. They have not managed, or let's uh, be kind to them, they have hardly managed the Nigerian economy. So, that very soon, and mark, not what I am saying, very, very soon, most essential medicines will disappear from the pharmacy. Most essential daily items like sugar, repair, uh, and all sorts of condiments. These two, two things make will disappear from the supermarket shop. And then we'll go back to the set of just like we witness during the Bwari administration that we we'll have to go to some special government places to queue for sugar, to queue for milk, to queue for, for baby food. We are in serious trouble. Multiply that or add to that, the thirty-three percent unemployment rate, the default in the payment of pensioner salaries on the worker salaries that is prevalent all over the state. We will need a miracle to be able to get out of these problems. And sadly, God has left visit miracles on people who are not prudent or on people who are prodigal with the resources that have been given to them by God. 
Uh, I don't know whether we should add, uh, you know, a prophet um, to your name because you sounded like oh, a, pro a prophet of doom. <laughs> 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 prophet, of, uh, prophet of doom. But um, uh, we hope we, we don't. We hope we don't get back to the days of uh, having to queue for bread, milk, and sugar. I mean, we, we have seen this in Venezuela. May God save us. <laughs> We've seen this in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. You know, in other mm -hmm. countries like that, we don't have to exactly. see Exactly. Lebanon. Mm. May God help us. Uh, 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 talking about the Central yeah. Bank of Nigeria, I mean, you, you know, you, you linked um, the, uh, the situation with the excess could account to, you know, economic, ma ma micro, macroeconomic issues. You talked yeah. about the, uh, uh, the efforts and difficulties faced by the economy and what the Central Bank uh, of Nigeria is doing. On the front page of the Nation newspaper, just at the bottom of that front page, we look at um, the move by the House of Representatives to bar... Uh, the governor and the deputy governor of Central Bank of Nigeria from politics. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Of course, a um, uh, uh, you know, suspected or rumored involvement or ambition to be the flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress for 2023 elections, uh, uh, of course, is, is fresh in the memory of a lot of people, including yourselves. Do you think this move by the House of Reps is necessary? <laughs> Do you think that his performance well, as CBN governor is affected by his political ambitions? Honestly speaking, what the CBA, the present CBS governor, was a lecture tried to do to participate or run for the presidency of Nigeria without first resigning as the CBN governor is very, very strange. It is only in Nigeria that that kind of a thing would happen. It's like the Chancellor of Echeka in the UK trying to vie for the Prime Minister of this state without first leaving the office. Or the Treasury Secretary in the U.S. trying to fight for the highest office in the U.S. without first resigning from his or her job. And when they don't do, when he doesn't do that, there has been no sanction from the authorities who should sanction the CBN government. The CBN has a government board. The CBN, I mean, the Nigeria has a minister of human. You have the president there. And you also have the Senate that will usually confirm the appointment of the CBN government. So if the CBN government is not the right thing, any of these authorities that I've mentioned are in the position to discipline him or to even track him. And then to the out of red issue that we talked about, I am of the opinion that making a law banning the CBN government from participating in politics is a very superfluous move in the sense that the law establishing the CBN today and the culture of Nigeria tries at a situation in which the CBN government will come out openly to start fraternizing or participating in politics. Where was the former CBN on against that? The allegation against him was that he was observing with certain politicians. And based on that, the man was illegal to support me. Why is it that what is good for Onoki is not, not good now for Nathan? The law is very sacrosanct. The only business or activity that any civil servant, that anybody in the position of the citizen government can participate in without residing the apartment is farming. It's farming. Any other thing like politics, like business, and what have you, they are liable to start immediately they show interest in those areas. So, if the House of Reps now decides to again make a law, like we always make, sooner than later, our laws will become like an encyclopedia and become very unwieldy to implement. Because each time we have a channel somewhere, we run to make a law to stop that routine. When in actual fact, nations are not governed by laws alone. Precepts are there, value systems are there, the culture is there, practices of the people are there, precedents are there. Peer review mechanisms are also instruments to ensure that people who want to go at play are brave and compelled to fall in line. So, that's my thinking on that. We don't need another law before the CBN government can be stopped 
from participating in politics. Or before he can be punished for staying in politics and using the nation's resources to power his ambition. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, as we, we read out, um, reps deny planning Bajabia Miller's sack over the water bill, is the way the paper put it. And um, what the district is saying is that the House of Reps has resolved to investigate an impeachment report. I mean, we saw those reports in some papers yesterday um, of the Speaker, Femi Bajabia Miller, allegedly moved by some lawmakers, especially from the North, over the consideration and um, passage of the controversial nat National Water Resources Bill. Um, uh, the city was disclosed at a press conference held to dismiss a media report, uh, which claimed that some of the lawmakers pushing for the passage of the bill were threatening the Speaker with impeachment. So the leaders of the main caucuses, as well as the uh, spokesman of, for the lower chamber, the paper says, uh, jointly signed, uh, jointly held, rather, a press conference after the plenary on Tuesday to debunk, uh, to debunk this. It says it's not going to happen. It's nothing like that. Hmm. I don't think a reputable newspaper or media will just cook up a story of that magnitude that uh, there are plans to impeach Mr. Bajabia Mina. If it was going to be an obstacle to about the passage of the water resources bill that is presently before the National Assembly. Most times, when politicians want to do their jobs, they never come out openly to say, you will collect that uh, when uh, Dr. Bukola Taraki was coming to become the Senate president, the plot were act at night. And most of the people who were mobilizing and who were going to vote for him practically slept in the premises of the National Assembly. Like Dr. Bukola Taraki came out later to confess that he slept inside his car for him to be able to enter the National Assembly early early in the morning and then to secure the mail that it is not carried away to frustrate his becoming the Senate president. You have also seen times with that number when there are rumors that certain people are going to be impeached, how the legislators who run from their respective houses and scale the first of the National Assembly to be able to get into the hollow timber to protect whatever uh, impeachment procedures uh, certain parties might be planning. Of course, we also remember how Margege stormed and he stormed the hollow timber of the Senate to attack the Senate to so make sure that the proceedings of that day is uh, truncated. So I wouldn't be surprised. If in actual fact I indeed certain persons are separate to pass into law the water pay. And as if they see the fact that they are as an obstacle, they will get rid of them. The question to now ask is this what is so important in this water resources deal that certain people and certain persons and from the certain section of the country are separate to make sure that that bill is passed into law. What is wrong with what is operation and what is on ground now? I suspect that there are sinister motives for wanting to make sure that this bill is passed into law. You will also recollect this bill has been presented or simply in the National Assembly or in the House of Red about two times. And the whole of Nigeria, speaking to their legislator, shut it down. But this time this bill is shut down, if it is correct again. They take it to the National Assembly to be passed into law. Let's alert Nigeria that there is a lot of danger in passing the water resources bill into law. It should not be like when during the military, during the era of um, uh, General Babangida, he passed a law that 115 meters uh, by the ocean side in all the states and region where the ocean will belong to the federal government. And immediately that decree was made, the airlines in the military and the airlines in the civil populace went and started hijacking all the land 
that are adjacent to the ocean and then begin to allocate those plots of land to themselves. That was when Osborne and some of these other parts of Lekki and Nagar became the patrimony of a few Nigerian allies. The second danger is this. When the water resources bill is passed into law, it will not be possible for certain people to apply the certain river, certain phone, certain places where water table is very low that it could be easily reached to be allocated to them. Like uh, the oil wells are located in the Niger Delta. So that when the airlines acquire those rich water resources area, they corner it and then they develop it and then they begin to sell the water to the Nigerian people. So the ordinary man is already hard up in uh, trying to make ends meet. And those things that means you remember that people like Zarosha, one of the first billionaires, this is not the first one that uh, Nigeria ever made, was really selling water before he became a billionaire. That was his fault. He had a borehole on Lagos Island and Wallaby and was selling water to people that turned into a billionaire overnight. So if the water resources bill becomes, becomes law, the federal government will not only attack all the waterways and the environment, individuals will also begin to apply to the federal government that certain water resources areas like pools, like dams, like rivers, be allocated to them. Just like they do get the oil well that turns them to billionaires in that currency of a night. The dangers are too many. The whole of Nigeria should rise up once again to so speak up and shoot down this water resources bill that they want to impose on all of us. It is like uh, Ruga. They want to sneak in Ruga to another route into our national life. You know, they try to get the Ruga being passed into law in which certain areas in the country will be here mark for certain pastoralists. Rather than encouraging those pastoralists to acquire land, to buy land, and they build the ranches like it is done in some other parts of the world. Quite interesting analysis uh, from you, Tunde Kola Um You, you, you brought you. up the, the Ruga issue again. <laughs> Let's see how, yeah. how this is. But what you're simply saying is there's no smoke without fire. Um, and uh, you're, not buying, you're not buying what they are saying in that press conference. Uh, it's been quite interesting. So many other papers to look at, so many other stories to look at. We've not had the time to talk about Muslim Muslim ticket in the consultations by uh, Shiwa Jibola Metin Wukan is, of course, in line. That would we'll, we'll have you, I'm sure, next, uh, the next time we have you, there may be more developments. I want to thank you very much for your time, sir, and for your expert you uh, analysis. Thank you very much. You have a great day. Same to you. All right, still ahead, uh, two days of nationwide protests that the Nigeria Labour Congress continues today. The union has said that if the federal government does not accede to the demands of ASU, they will back on a three-day strike. We'll discuss this ahead on the program. Stay with us.